What's going on lately? Why are all the new graphics cards coming out getting such bad reviews, and are the new NVIDIA RTX 4000 and AMD RX 7000 really that bad? You've come to the right video to find out. Today we are going to build and test the ultimate value for money gaming PC, with an RTX 4060 OTI. A very controversial graphics card in many ways, which has a lot to prove. Will this gaming PC, with an i5-12400 and a RTX 4060 Ti, be the best you can buy for 1000 euros? Let's check it out so stay and watch the video. But hey, are you already subscribed to the channel? You are supporting the channel a lot and we are on our way to reach 20.000 subscribers in the channel by 2023. If you want to help us achieve this great goal, subscribe and leave your like. To support the hours and hours of work networks, like TikTok or Instagram, and above all, add our Amazon and Newegg affiliate links to your bookmarks. Let's start by reviewing the components of the PC. As I said, in the description you will have the direct link to the complete configuration. To start we have the case, which is a Enfortech Creator Mini, a micro ATX option with a spectacular aesthetic in white color that also includes four fans and a lot of RGB. The tower is as I always tell you a more personal components, so you could put another box that you like more or is cheaper too. The processor that has this PC is the beastly i5-12400, the most powerful option for gaming, which costs less than 200 euros and comes with 6 cores and 12 very fast threads. To dissipate the heat generated, we have again n and its Centaurus air heatsink. A very cool alternative in aesthetics that is also more than enough to dissipate all the heat that can generate this i5. The temperatures it is giving me are top. I have two modules G-Skill Trident Z8GB at 3200 mHz as RAM, a configuration that goes great, as demonstrated in this video, in which we compare different configurations of RAM DDR4 and DDR5. The motherboard is an ASUS TUF B660M Plus Wi-Fi, which has the latest in connections and interfaces. Again, this motherboard with Wi-Fi might not be the most interesting if you are on a tighter budget, and a Gigabyte B660 meters DS3H could be equally useful costing 50 euros less. In terms of storage, I have a 1TB NVMe Gen 4 SSD as my main drive, although I also have several extra drives, although all of them are SSDs. HDDs in 2022 are already going backwards. I would not recommend buying a Gen 4 SSD, as we see in this video, a Gen 3 gives us almost the same performance and costs half as much. In relation quality price ratio would be a better option. The power supply is another n component, the Sagitta RGB 650W model. An 80 plus gold certified power supply that is completely modular. Enough power to support this configuration that we are assembling today. Remember that the power supply is a very important component, and this is a quality model. To some it might seem underpowered, but we are talking about super efficient components, and a graphics card that only requires an 8-pin connector, exactly the same as a GTX 1060 from years ago. Finally comes the graphics card. The most anticipated component of this PC. Let's see how is the RTX 4060 Ti Gaming X Trio from MSI, the top version of this new graphics card from NVIDIA. I understand that these numbers alone are not bringing you anything either, so let's compare the specifications of this graphics card with its direct competitors. The difference in concept and architecture with NVIDIA is extremely noticeable, as AMD has a very different way of achieving performance, despite having far fewer cores. Having gone over the features, let's see how this Ultimate i5-12400 plus RTX 4060T combo performs in different video games. Let's start with Fortnite. The game is running at 3440 by 1440 resolution, and the graphics settings are as high as possible on absolutely everything. Keep in mind that this resolution is higher than 2K, and is halfway to 4K. It is the maximum that can be demanded from the game, and the graphics is around 45 FPS on average. Obviously, as long as you put a little more contained graphic qualities, or activate a light DLSS, you will be exceeding 60 FPS, without noticing even the slightest drop in image quality. In 1080p for example, lowering the graphics settings a bit, the graphics is practically at 200 FPS, and the processor starts to suffer a lot in that scenario. If your goal is to go above 240 FPS, a more powerful processor would be the right thing to go with this 4060 Ti. 
Now let's go to GTA 5 and its integrated benchmark. The game is running at 3440 by 1440 resolution, with the graphic qualities in Ultra. Considering the immense demands of this configuration, I don't think it's a bad result to see these averages of around 40 FPS. The average in the upper graph is altered by the black clips, so it should not be taken into account. Considering that we are not talking about a competitive game that requires so much fluidity, and that with DLSS we could easily raise that number to 6.0 FPS stable on average, it seems to me a top result. Compared to the 12GB RTX 4070, we see about a 10% drop, which is not too bad. Next comes a heavyweight, Cyberpunk 2077. The game is running at 3440 by 1440 resolution, and the graphic qualities are on high. This is a clear example of suffering on the part of the graphics, although it would be more the responsibility of the optimization of the video game than anything else. On average we see that it exceeds 45 FPS in the integrated benchmark, which is not a disaster, but it is about 25% below the RTX 4070. A barbarity, which may be due to those 8 GB of VRAM of this 4060T. The most magical benchmark is on the Hogwarts Legacy, we keep the resolution 3440 by 1440 and the qualities on high. This is another ultra demanding game, and we see how in the Hogsmeade area the average FPS is around 45 again. In this case the RTX 4070 is 30% above, something more than remarkable. In all these gaming tests, technologies such as ray tracing and DLSS from Nvidia have not been activated. Both would obviously be one of the main strengths of this graphics card, since compared to AMD, and while waiting for its new Fidelity FX Super Resolution technology, Nvidia still reigns in this regard. The graphics already performs great on a 3440 by 1440 monitor, but think that if DLSS is activated, those FPS can go up a lot, without any noticeable loss of quality. If you thought that the performance was weak, keep this in mind, because it seems to me that this graphics card has enough power for the graphic configurations used by 99% of gamers. I think I'm right in saying that this PC could be one of the best on the market for a lot of people. We have a new and cheap platform, with 12th generation Intel processors that still perform great in gaming. Obviously now the 13th generation processors have also come out, so in the description you will have other super interesting PCs with Intel processors and also AMD Ryzen last generation. They are beastly configurations, check them out in the description. The rest is very standard, but very flashy, thanks to that super flashy Enfortech case and heatsink. As I said, this could be a section where you could cut back a bit, and spend less money, buying lower end components, if your budget is limited and aesthetics are not so important. You have combos like a Enfortech Kylum case and Enfortech Vila heatsink, like the ones we use in the Chinese PC, that would keep the PC as cool, but you would lower the price about 25 euros extra. Not bad at all. Another aspect to look at would be storage. Obviously I wouldn't recommend buying a Gen 4 NVMe SSD if you were tight on money. Staying with a Gen 3 would be enough, and in the process you would save another 50 euros. The other big key would be the graphics card. In this case the most expensive of the PC, since we are mounting a RTX 406 OTI. At this time, as seen, I do not think this graphics is the most interesting in value for money, you have options like the AMD RX 6750 XT, which despite being a previous generation, still performs super well, and the price is a scandal. A computer with that graphics for 1000 euros is hard to beat. The RTX 4070 costs more, but that extra 200 euros I think it's worth it if the alternative you have is this RTX 4060 Ti, which performs much less and has a fairly limiting memory configuration. So what, do you think this is the best next gen gaming PC configuration for 2023? Which of these changes would you make? Leave me your opinion in the comments, and leave a like and subscribe if you liked the video. That said, we will see you with more and better content, see you next time, bye.